How's it going, Jets fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Moran. And today we want to discuss Garrett Wilson. I know he had a phenomenal performance in week two. We want to take a look at some of his routes, what he did, what he accomplished, and some of the advanced analytics that went into his game uh, to really extrapolate on his, his skill set. We saw after week one, there were a lot of opportunities that the Jets missed on to actually uh, you know, build on his route tree, build on his qualities. And I think as a first game rookie, they were like, okay, you know what? Let's let's just let him ease into it. We're not going to overdo it with him. And then week two, they were like, okay, well, he was open a lot last week. Why didn't we look his way? Why didn't we give him more opportunities? You know, maybe easing him in is the best way to do that is just to throw him into the fire and give him a lot of uh, a lot of targets. And they did just that against the Cleveland Browns, and he took advantage of it, man. Wow, did he look good? He looked um, electric. Is he's obviously a playmaker. You get the ball in space with him. He can do a lot of things for your offense. And man coverage against him, you can't match up. He, he's going to destroy anybody in man coverage. He's too quick. He's too agile. Um, he's such so good with his body fakes. He really just throws everybody off. Um, you're going to see that in some of the clips that we will show you today. But Ryan, before we dive into Garrett Wilson and what he's bringing to this team thus far, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, Alex. It was a great second game that Garrett had and really his – first opportunity to, you know, really play all throughout the entirety of the ball game from the first snap all the way through. And he, he did miss a little time um, just to really speak on his effort, you know, on a play in the third quarter play that Dean didn't even end up in a completion. I mean, you, you see that this guy, he loves to win. He cares the emotion and, you know, he, he goes up for a jump ball and a out route off play action in the third quarter. And, you know, that, that did hold him out for a little bit, but he came right back in and, you know, just continued to dominate. I mean, all throughout this game was targeted 14 times. Also had an opportunity on an end around to just add to his already complete versatile skill set. I mean, this guy offers gadget ability to Michael Floor. You know, this week in the screen game, I mean, the Bengals play some man coverage, just going over some of their tape pretty earlier today and seeing, you know, what they like to do. I, I think there's going to be opportunities for this guy moving forward, you know, not just even in the passing game, which we obviously saw. I mean, eight catches, 102 yards and two touchdowns with which both came in the red zone, you know, just another element to his game. Cause he, like we've said, he's not the biggest guy in terms of height and weight, but in the red zone, I mean, he's got great ball skills. He's got contested catch ability. He can jump, stay in the air. I mean, it's, it's such a complete skills that this guy offers. I mean, in the game Sunday, you saw him all over the field, whether it was at wide and tight splits in the slot, you know, he was winning underneath, winning over the middle, you know, on the intermediate and deep levels, inside and outside the numbers. I mean, he's just such a complete player with 4-3 speed and, you know, great quickness to boot, athletically speaking, that, you know, I think it's really just the start. I mean, he he was dominant in the game, you know, was the star for the Jets and just excited to really continue to see Garrett and, you know, go over some of his plays, you know, from Sunday's game. Absolutely. And to give you some insight into what he did um, in week two before we dive into the clips here, just reading off his stats uh, from the game. So he finished with 14 targets. That is the, probably the most in the entire team. He had eight receptions for 102 yards, two touchdowns. Um, obviously, you know, made a significant impact there. Played 48.6% of his reps in the slot, which I found to be very interesting. 43.2% came out wide. Um, he was very, very good in the slot, obviously. He did have that one drop, but obviously made up for it. He had four, he had over two games as four missed tackles force. He had one against Cleveland and three against Baltimore. He had six first downs converted, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. A long of 31 yards, um, you know, 2.9 yards after the catch. But, you know, this is definitely a player who is dynamic, versatile. He can bring a lot to your offense, and I expect him to continue making a significant impact here down the stretch. And I think, you know, we're kind of quickly seeing that while Corey Davis is heavily involved, Garrett Wilson might lead this team in yards. I mean, Elijah Moore obviously is is one of the team's premier playmakers, but Wilson's after this game makes me think that maybe they're going to begin to rely on him more than anybody. And, and I think that's a good thing, you know, just start building on the rookie talent and, and keep developing them. But let's dive into some of the clips here and, uh, and then break down what kind of Garrett Wilson is bringing uh, to us uh, in week three after a week two standout performance. All right. So this was his first catch of the day in the red zone. I got it. You, there's nothing I love more than receivers that get open in the red zone. Yep. It's a, it's a good catch too. Throws a little behind. Yep. Gets down. If that's on him. Probably scores there. Yep. That there were even a couple of other opportunities in the red zone in this game where he was open. It was one was on a stick nod down the mm -hmm. seam, and then one was on an out route, uh, like in the middle of the end zone going out. Yep. Absolutely. So nice. It's nice to see him getting targeted in the red zone too. He's very, very shifty. He can get open in those pockets quite easily. 
I think probably his best route of the game right here. I mean, <laughs> Maybe his best fade, route of the week. Little fade route. He he's so good on fade routes for a smaller guy. Just yeah, I mean, because because the, the thing about this route right is that if you're a cornerback, you, if you get beat inside, you're done. Right. right, like you're you're done if you give up that slant right there. He has no help in the middle of the field. If he gives up that slant, he's in, he's screwed. This is a touchdown, and you know Garrett Wilson knows this, and he's so shifty that all he has to do is give him a little bit of that that shake inside himself. release, and yep, there's a little shake, and he gives him a little shake. Bam, he's already look his whole body is moving. So bam, he's already in the air moving easily. You know, I'd I'd rather test my luck on the outside than if I'm a cornerback with no support anywhere. I'd rather test my luck on the outside uh, than get beat inside. So. I think, you know, as a corner, you're, you're, there's nothing you can really do unless you're like Revis or one of the best cornerbacks in football. You know, you're kind of in no man's land here. You're, you're going to get beat by a guy with this type of quality. Um, and, and he does a great job just, just uh, building on it and, and taking this touchdown easily. And this is what great players do. You know, great players beat up on guys in, in bad situations. That, that's that's in any sport. If you look at any sport, you have a bad pitcher and a, and a great hitter. You have a, a bad cornerback and a great receiver. You're expected to beat to beat these teams uh, and beat these players in one on one situations. So I'm very happy to see Garrett Wilson is already taking advantage of those opportunities. Oh, 100 percent. And the corner here is playing him pretty straight up. He's not really favoring inside or out. And Garrett really just you know stems him inside there with a quick little release and squirts right out. I mean, it's really crafty work. I don't know why he wouldn't jam him, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're right. Like this, I guess just Garrett was so sudden off off the ball. You know, it, ma- it makes it hard. Yeah. I mean, it, look, if you if you jam him and successfully do it, this play's dead, right? Like he has right. – Joe Flacco has to move off that progression very fast. It looks like it was only – I mean, the only other progression he really has is to look all the way to the other side Elijah to Moore. Elijah Moore. Who was um, actually open too. He is open, so – but. Again, like there's also a guy right there who's jumping because he's right. throwing it, so he might have sacked him. Um, you know, maybe that's a better way for the cornerback to to approach that because he's on an island. Just try to jam him and try to give yourself an, a second. But man coverage against against Garrett Wilson, there's no freaking chance. You'll no take shot. it. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's no a well shot. drawn up play by Michael Floor too to get Wilson and Moore. You know, both hmm. open in a situation like that. Absolutely. Oh, he was yelling at that fan too. I saw that video. Yeah, you, you see the emotion <laughs> that this guy plays with. I mean, he definitely. What did the fans do? <laughs> yeah, no. I, but even on like the onside kick on the game winning touchdown, of course, like, this, this guy definitely cares. He wants to win, and I think there was a reason he was so frustrated after limited opportunities in the first game. Right, right. And one of those, yeah, I love this. Yeah, and a tight split alignment, which was one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, very many pre-snap alignments he had in this game. Yeah. I, you know what I like about this? I like how he's moving into the route, right? Um, which creates a little bit more confusion for the defensive back because they're moving with him, so they don't have they're not their feet aren't set, they're not ready, they don't know what's coming. And I love how it's a little bit of a delayed release. You know, he's kind of right. like jogging a little bit, and then bam, he takes off, gives him a little step, and he's off to the races. 100%. Very nice job. You, you said it. I mean, he gets a free release, and he uses great tempo. You know, working while gaining ground up to the corner there, and really plants his foot in the ground right at the 25 changes his direction. You see just how much he can explode, you know, running horizontally works around him. I mean, it's just really impressive stuff. And you see the type of athlete this guy is and why he's drawing these Justin Jefferson comps, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. just that type of stuff. Yeah. I also like how he doesn't run into the DB. He just cuts right underneath him and just crosses his face. Um, Mm -hmm. He's got so much speed and, you know, man coverage again, you're like, he, he can't guard him in man coverage. I don't know what the Browns are doing here. But there's just no stopping this man. If you're going to do this, if you're going to play this way, you're just asking to be beat. You have to play more zone against him and take away the zones um, because he's going to beat you one on one. And that's ultimately what defenses are probably realizing now is you can't leave this guy wide open because it's an easy read for Joe Flacco. Find find Wilson. Let him let him get open and just wait for him to get open. Essentially, if you're playing man. And I think another key takeaway for me there is like gaining ground is such a fine art. Like it's a game of inches. As you said, I mean, you, you got to leave yourself the perfect amount of space. You can't work yourself into him and allow the corner to get physical, or you also can't be too far away because you're not really going to get the guy to bite. So just that type of nuance, you know, to his route running and release packages is certainly encouraging to see from a rookie. This was when he came back from injury. This was the first big play for 31 yards. He gets the safety really inside out on the steep out route. Yeah. So now they're playing zone. 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now they're <laughs> now they're like, oh, let's let's you know what? He's kicking our ass playing man. Let's go play some zone coverage. <laughs> the linebackers are really close together here. They're really trying to protect the middle of the field, and you know they leave they leave our guy guy Wilson wide open down there, and 100%. you know zone man doesn't seem like can really stop him any way you any way you look at it, but. Nice. That that was like the gain of thirty one yards. That was yes. his longest gain. Yes. Yeah, that's very nice. Let's see his let's see his uh his route right here, one more time. They went with two deep safeties. He completely gets this guy to turn inside out. Yeah, I like the stem. Gets yep. upfield, gives him a nice fake. But here's what I like the most: some receivers will round this out. They'll yep. they'll you know they'll actually tra- keep traveling downfield, which can obviously give the defensive backs more time and sp- and less space to close in. Instead, watch what he does. He he flattens his route out and comes back to the football. And that's the sign of a very good receiver. That's the sign of a guy who knows how to help his quarterback out. Absolutely. You want to keep that direct, and he certainly does that there. Here you see him inside the numbers on a slant route. Good grab again. Don't take those big hits. He's also protecting himself, which yep. I definitely like. You know, we see receivers try to do too much and get their apps, get their head blown off going over the middle like this. And he's really smart, goes down. Gets the first down and protects his body so we can play, live to see another down. And that's this is just smart football. He's high IQ. Obviously, he's getting open. He's attacking the middle of the field. Even with the even with the Browns trying to protect that space, yep. he finds he finds an opening and very works very his well way through the zone. And that was one of his slot routes, right? You're seeing him attack the yep. seams too. Yep. Here on a quick out underneath. A couple yards. Yep. And then I like these those. final two catches were right after the third down drop he had late in the fourth quarter. Here's one, and it's, you know, the next play is a very similar route, again, against two deep safeties. You know, they really did a good job with a quick, skinny post slant route. They did it he, really twice here. Like like I said before, he has he had 14 targets in this yep. game. I mean, he is becoming a security blanket for Joe Flacco. I mean, look, Joe Absolutely. Flacco has a guy in his face. He's leaning back, and he said, "Here's there's Garrett Wilson again. Let me get the ball to him. Pretty easy there. Yep. Again, like you said, too, work, working his way through zones, you see, you know, just knows where to get. And, and you'll see it again here. I mean, that this throw is in perfect strides, you know, once he gets past the linebacker there. Beautiful. Absolutely, Absolutely. gorgeous. Yeah. Nice little post in the middle. Yep. Mm-mm. With the two safeties. Yep. <laughs> Zone coverage again. Can't <laughs> stop him. So, so you're really just seeing how complete of a skill set he has. You know, there's really nothing he can't do. He, I love how he just, like, right when he gets behind this linebacker here, watch how the second he gets behind him, he just darts right, right past him, and that window is curated because of his route running. Right? If he, if he doesn't, if he doesn't get enough post on this, if he doesn't get enough break on this, on the, on the stem of this route, uh, this is an interception. Right? Like, this is right to the defender, but. He does such a good job knowing where that linebacker is, and he just bends the second he gets around him, right past him, and he le- right, uh, and he keeps going upfield and gets a really good opportunity. Um, I don't necessarily understand why the safeties back there are playing so deep in the end zone. I mean, there's a lot of real estate there, so just bad defense by the Browns. But when you have bad defenses, your best players have to have to capitalize on them, and the Jets did just that. And the Jets found ways to get the ball to their best player that day. Or I guess maybe I guess you could say Joe Flacco might have been their best player, but Guy Wilson was neck and neck with him, um, two different positions. But you know, this is a, another example of just good chemistry between him and Joe Flacco finding space in in the field and taking advantage of the of the scheme that, that the Browns were playing. They were playing those two deep safeties, and they were just giving up a lot of yardage. They were just letting Garrett Wilson get open and. Uh, definitely is not something that uh, the Jets next few opponents are, are going to want to do because they, they just realized that, oh crap, this guy, this guy, we got to close out fast. The Browns just look lazy here. Look, they're all kind of hanging their head. This guy's on the ground. <laughs> and he beats four defenders in the space. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah, he's hyped. I'd be hyped too. And, and I love the way he just ran through the ball. Like, he, despite the drop that he had prior, you just see how unfaced he is running straight through that pass there, you know, and, and obviously gets it in the end zone. There's no slowing down or stopping, you know. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. I mean, you you can just see how, I mean, he does not care that those safeties are there. He knows this, I could get absolutely popped right here. I could get absolutely popped right here. Those two safeties over top, he could be crashing in. He's like, I'm making this catch and I'm scoring a touchdown. And he goes in untouched. You know, that, that makes it even better. And then you see, they're all excited here. Um, you know, this is definitely... 
uh, a player who I th- I would say is well on his way to working into WR2. He could be WR1 by the end of the year. I mean, I think he might be the most talented uh, playmaker on the roster in terms of pure athleticism, pure talent. Um, I just think he needs a little bit more time. I'm curious to see his chemistry with Zach Wilson when he gets back. That's going to be a big one. We're already seeing the chemistry he has with Joe Flacco, and obviously that's standing out. Uh, but Zach Wilson obviously has not had a lot of time to play with him. So that's going to be maybe an instant period. Um, you know, he has to, he has to rely on him. I think, I think Zach Wilson will probably rely on the tight ends a little bit more um, than, than the receivers, but Joe Flacco's a veteran. So he knows, you know, I don't have to rely on the underneath guys. I can rely on the guys running actual routes downfield that my security blanket can be first downs. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, third and longs or third and shorts. It could be first downs on second down. So that's what the veteran mentality would be, I guess, you know, opposed to, maybe a youthful one, just kind of checking the ball down. Like, and we've seen it with younger quarterbacks, whether it be Daniel Jones or Trey Lance or, you know, prayers out to Trey Lance, by the way, definitely got his ankle busted. Uh, but younger quarterbacks sometimes check it down. They don't see the reads. So, you know, a veteran like <clears throat> like Joe Flacco knows where to go with the football and knows, you know, how how these uh, concepts are attacking the opposing defensive schemes. So definitely very excited about uh, Garrett Wilson. You know, you're seeing it on film. You're seeing he is very, very talented. And I think that the Jets are going to continue to get him involved and just extrapolate on his strengths moving forward, which is all we can hope for, right? You said it, Alex. I mean, I feel like this was just the start. And when the Jets drafted him 10th overall, I mean, the expectations from the fans, the organization, the coaching staff, I mean, everyone knew this kid's talent. And you're already seeing it in just the second game. I mean, he even showed the glimpses in the first game when, when we ran the tape last week. And you look at some of his highlights, like you said, what he can do with the ball and his hands in space after the catch how dynamic he is with his quickness, um, you know, making defenders miss. He's very shifty and you see that in his route running as well. I mean, he, he, you know, on that first touchdown he scored, I mean, he can completely leave a guy dusted and generate so much separation in in a tight space down in the red zone. So you're seeing just how complete of a skill set this guy has. And what's nice now is, you know, you're going to probably see teams put more attention and focus his way. Now, now you have Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, Tyler Conklin. There's so many other guys in this passing game that make it complete and balance things out to where, you know, teams can key in on Garrett now if they want. And guess what? The, the Jets really shouldn't miss a beat with the other guys that they have. And it's really going to be exciting to continue to see this group, you know, materialize here as we go. Absolutely. But guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Fireside Jets. Take a look at Garrett Wilson, what he put on the uh, field in week two. Obviously, we're very excited about it, and hopefully he continues to build on this stellar performance. I uh, would love to hear your perspectives and opinions below. As always, your thoughts on Garrett and you know the entire offense and the comeback win. Always happy to hear them. Really, really appreciate all the support. Make sure to like and subscribe. As always, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. 